All right, now I've got the um, the push rod side cut and trench that we use the uh, the cylinder with. Let's zoom on in. That would be this side right here. Now I've got to come in on it and cut the bulk of the other side. And the tool I use, believe it or not, is this giant flame. Once again, the reason is why at the very tip, that's my pointer. And then I use this belly to actually form the shape. I'm going to come in here with pressure in a downward motion, not on the side, on downward. And I'm going to pull that shape in and trim the top down. Now, I'm sorry if my hand gets in the way. Like I said, sometimes it's really hard to show it. But I'm going to get down here and try to zoom in as best as I can where you can see it. And I'm going to try to keep my hands out. At least you can get the, the idea of what it is that I'm doing. Okay. First, I'm going to come in on the top. Like I said, the belly's what's doing the contact. I'm keeping the point way up on, way up on the top. Now I'm going to come in on the side and do a swoop. And then I'm always going to do what I call an undertow underneath the guide where I pull it downward. I'm hoping my hand ain't in the way. Then I come from the other direction. Alright, I'm going to go back and forth a couple of times. Then I'm going to chew back at this main chunk of meat. Now I'm going to spend a little bit of time on the very tippy top and pull that guide down. Alright, now, I think you're getting the point of how I use this, the belly, and I'm using that pointer. To come underneath and catch inside the guide and form that shape. Now I'm going to tell you what you need to do if you're going to try these things is get you a junk set of heads because it took me a long time to get where you can control a bird that giant big spinning at that RPM trying to shape that guide. You're in for a lot of practice on it. You're not using a fast cutter speed. You're using a slow to medium right here. And like I said, this is the bulk material removal. Now, that's all the bulk removed. I'm going to do my fine tuning with a little bitty egg and get a really beautiful shape all the way around on it. All right, so that right there is uh, what how I use to shape it. Let's get a straight shot. You can see I still got, that blame it, I hate my feet being so big, guys. I'm sorry. You can see how I got that uh, 
straightened out, but there's still a lot of work to be done over here, which I will do with another burr, a, a medium sized egg to trim and blend that into the trench. Also to finalize shape this part right here. Um, I'll show you how I step do that because this is probably one of the trickiest procedures there is. But when you get finished with it, it's going to have an incredible shape, not to mention the airflow numbers are off the charts on your mid and high lift airflow. All right, and also something else here is it's a connect the dot deal. How I move this side and trench and cut all that out, then you have to come in all the way to the front, to the uh, push rod side and go in there and connect the dot where you start right here and pull it all the way back which that's about a four to five inch swoop right there where you have to pull that material to lead it into it to feed this new area here that would, would have been a negative pressure. Ain't going to be a negative pressure now. It's going to become positive as it tries to fill that whole area up. All right, so we'll go on to the next step. And, and now that all of the, the trenching is done, as I call it, and forming the guide, with the big bulks. The next step is going to be now to contour everything. Where I went in there and dug the trench right here, which I tried not to dig this way, I dug into the guide. There's still going to be humps and bumps, uh, mainly right here where the trench is and it comes up to here. But this is where it gets tricky, girls and boys. Right there where that bowl cut is, where the factory cut is, you've got to go there down. And what you're using is you're using your fingers and the sight from the reflection of the light. Going back and forth is going to have a different reflection. And then what you do here is, and this is what takes the practice and the time, is going in there and I mean, I can see through the camera, I'm looking at it, I can see the bumps which look to be right in here. Okay, you got to smooth that transition out. Which means what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna have to take your, your, your egg and only cut the higher level areas. Because what you wanna do is you wanna bring the high level to where it levels with where that trench is cut right there. And you might take five or six swoops, maybe 10 or 12, because you gotta be able to take your finger and feel a flatness to it where you cannot tell if there has been a trench drug. I'm going to do a little work on it and come back and see if I can get the light to reflect it. Hey, I just spent the better part of about 20 minutes and I did it with this double cross cut egg and I have went in there now to the point that I have contoured and moved this entire wall right here where when I take my finger and run down the side I feel no humps except for a light transition right where it went into the bowl cut. Now, I would like to move that over some and give a little bit better transition, but I'm going to have to put the sonic checker before and aft and see what I got. I've gone as far as I can go right now without putting the sonic checker in here to see what I got, but the main thing is I have got a beautiful, and I'm trying, I'm going to move the light around a little bit. I have got a beautiful transition and you cannot actually tell now that I went in there and trenched this area and any of it touched this wall. Uh, there is a big hump about halfway up because now I got to turn the port over and come from the port side in and connect dot to dot to finish moving that entire wall over. And it's just finessing. You can play with that sometimes for hours on each port to get them exactly perfect and measuring. It just depends on how much money you're getting paid to do it. But the big gain is done right there. I mean, and that is a really smooth transition. You can't feel any humps or ridges. It feels just like it's poured in there, like it was made that way from the factory. All right, now on this side here, it's pretty much the same thing. We move right on over. And voila. 
I went in here and worked this side, pulled it up to where there's my breakaway where the tube is going to be. Okay, and I've got that pretty much leveled and went in there and just fine-tuned the bowls. Uh, got it radiused real good and rolled all the way up to the 60 degree seat. Um, that is really a beautiful when you consider the valve diameter being, you know, 1850. And um, hadn't even went to the 194 yet. I don't do that till all this is done. But at this point right here, I got the shape good. Now what I'm going to need to do is do all of them like that and then flip them over. And then I'll work on pulling the entrances to that one spot. Like I was telling you, it goes to about there underneath the port. Then I'm going to have to come from the flange and go all the way to there to connect dot to dot to where the whole wall will be pulled over. All right, that's it for the bowls. They're done, and check you later.